Good evening, everyone. I am Andrew Rehfeld and the president and CEO of the Jewish Federation of St. Louis. It is such a delight to be here. I do want to recognize Representative Dean Plotcher, who joined us, uh, and thank you so much for your leadership and to be part of our community this evening. I also want to extend my uh, congratulations to Angela and to Bert for your leadership. I've learned a good deal from both of you, and I look forward to that in the future. On the walls of my home in University City are posed uh, candid snapshots of Morris and Francis Slotnick, my grandmother uh, and my grandfather, whose family treks from Eastern Europe in 1906 ultimately led, ultimately led to this annual meeting tonight. See, my grandfather trained as a chazan and brought me up in his home to love Shabbat and love Friday night dinner and feel so deeply connected to our tradition and the importance of Jewish learning. I learned for a year in Israel and considered on three different occasions to enter the rabbinate, all of which is to say I am so honored to be here now for the fifth time to speak to you at this annual meeting. It's a night of remembrance and celebration devoted to all the great things that we have done and all of the remarkable things we have yet to do. The Jewish Federation, as we saw, began in 1901 in order to preserve and enhance Jewish life in St. Louis, Israel, and around the world. Part of the system that began in 1895 to meet the needs of two and a half immigrants, immigrants like my grandparents. Today, our community is different and our challenges are unique. But at its core, our mission remains the same. We are here for each other in times of joy, in times of need, building a strong and vibrant St. Louis community connected to the Jewish people around the world in a manner that helps them live lives of dignity, meaning, and purpose. Dignity, to make sure there's not a single member of our community who goes without basic support, whether that's food or clothing or housing. Meaning to ensure multiple access of life into Jewish learning, Israel, and the Jewish people as part of a life well lived. And purpose, leveraging our human and financial resources to help anyone in need on the basis of Jewish values. And we do that in two ways. Number one, in a way that we've done since 1901, and that is we operate as a foundation for Jewish philanthropy. We do it in a five-step process, we assess the needs of the community every year and on a long-term basis. We plan to meet the needs. We raise the funds to execute those plans. We invest in the community and our partner agencies, and we evaluate the impact of our work. Assess, plan, raise funds, invest, and evaluate. We've done that, and this year alone we will be investing in any number of ways over $13 million to sustain the Jewish people here and abroad. And this year, we're putting that foundation function, a foundation for Jewish philanthropy, together in one unit. And I am so delighted, as Harvey mentioned, to announce here and to welcome the new chief of philanthropy, our chief philanthropy officer, Michael Oberlander, to the team. Very it has brought such energy in life, and it's been so, uh, so appreciated. At the same time that we've been a foundation for Jewish philanthropy for over 100 years, over 30 years ago, we started to do something else. We started to become a provider of direct services to the community through our Brodsky Library, through the Holocaust Museum, through the community archives that put together such a beautiful, beautiful video. The PJ Library, Community Concierge, NextGen, thanks to a separate grant from the Steinberg Family Foundation. And I want to thank publicly Sonia Dubinsky's leadership over all of our direct services. She has led it and will continue to lead it with integrity and purpose. So how are we doing? As a community development organization, any of our measure of our work must, in the first instance, be the measure of the vitality of our community, the connections we foster to the Jewish people and their tradition, our support for Israel and Jewish communities around the world, and our ability to mobilize our own community to help suffering and to help relieve those from suffering from unjust, injustice and inequity, particularly in our own region. In so many ways, we are seeing positive signs, even as there's so much left to do. 
in the first instance? Can we recognize the vibrancy and the achievement of Covenant Place's phase one that came to open and thank Joan Dennison and her board chair, Scott Malin, for a tremendous achievement. Just a few weeks ago, we celebrated the JCC Maccabi Games, and Lynn Whittles, who couldn't make it because she had, I don't know, her sons getting married in Philadelphia, uh, as well as Stephen Goldenberg, the board chair, thank you and the hundreds of volunteers that you leveraged to mobilize that event for our community. The 25th anniversary of the Corn Bloom Food Pantry, and Lou Albert as ex Executive Director and Karen Suroff of the JFNCS, you deserve our praise and thanks and a round of applause as well. And I could go on with every one of our institutions, whether it's the Jewish Light or Hillel or so many others. And just to be clear, these achievements are not federations. They are the result of the hard work of so many others in our community. But as a community development organization, we have provided foundations and will continue to be here to support them in order to achieve their success. That is partnership, that is bottom up, and their success must be a measure of our own ability. And we should all feel pride that we and all of you in this room were able to help us with the resources needed to support them in their tasks. And it's not just our agencies. Federations Direct Services continue to shine. St. Louis continues to have one of the most impactful PJ library programs that foster intimate connections between parents and grandparents and their children over books and learnings about Jewish values. And I want to thank Jennifer Lotsoff for leading that effort and Beth Grafman, who again this year is here from the Grinspoon Foundation, wherever you may be. Thank you. Federation's own NORC, the Naturally Occurring Retirement Community, continues to receive award thanks to the leadership of Karen Barry Albert. And this is a program that was started by the vision and inspiration of Barry Rosenberg, who today will be elected to the Council of Life. Uh, the Center for Jewish Learning that we've just created has attracted over 2,000 individuals to its various adult education officers over its last two years, thanks in large part to the leadership of its director, Cindy Levy, and finally, the Millstone Institute that continues to receive national recognition. I want to thank Marcy Mayer Eisen, Karen Scher, and the lay leadership of Paul Flotkin, who led the committee for Millstone. Thank you. And of course, a great thanks to all of the lay leadership, Ken Hirschfeld and uh, Myrna Mayer, for your support of the Holocaust Museum and Learning Center, which every year touches 30,000 individual lives in St. Louis. Now that's all the ways that we have impact in the community. Another measure of, our, uh, of the State of the Federation is also the level of direct philanthropic support. And on that score, I'm so pleased to announce that in 2015, the Federation had its first significant year of growth in the number of donors in over 10 years. Our donor base grew for only the third time since 1989. We saw the number of donors aged 35 to 50 uh, increase by over 11%, and we saw the number of individuals in the baby boom population, the hardest, the one that has been declining the most, uh, in fact grew by over 8%. That's people who are in the ages of 50 to 71. It even gets better. In fact, our, do our overall donor growth in terms of numbers of people engaged in supporting exceeded the national uh, results by seven points. The national as a system is down 4% in the number of donors who are engaged in Federation. And in St. Louis, we had an overall growth rate of 3%. Now, the 3% growth rate is a good start, but it's only a good start. Uh, it's only the third time in 25 years we've seen any growth at all. But we have our work cut out for us. We need to grow our base quickly because of the demographics of our donor population. It's important that we as a community recognize where we currently are. And I know I speak not only of our only organization, but of synagogues and also the agencies. Over one-third of the total value of our annual campaign comes from donors who are over the age of 80. One third of the value of our campaign
comes from donors over the age of 80. That is a particularly high number. And this is why the significant growth of the numbers in the 35 to 70 year old range is so significant for the sustainability of our organization and our ability to be there to help those in need. So critical to our overall long term health. It's not going to be easy or quick. But our engagement strategy in place now for two years is a strategy to focus on seeing uh, community partnerships and engagement opportunities just like this evening. We're seeing the results, and I believe we are on the right track. And to that end, I want to special sh especially shout out uh, the women of women's philanthropy of uh, Jewish Federation of St. Louis, led this year by Michelle Rubin and staff Julie Gibbs. You've done a phenomenal job of engaging, of re-engaging, of making relevant and meaningful engagement in Jewish philanthropy as part of the Jewish community. And we all owe you a thanks. As a community development organization, our ability to succeed depends upon the work of our volunteers. And I just want to add my voice of thanks to all of the dedicated lay leadership who have spent countless hours devoted to making our community better. A special note this year is to Tim Stern, who single-handedly uh, recreated, hold on one second, who single-handedly uh, recreated a volunteer campaign committee structure and whose leadership is helping us attract a new generation of support. Thank you for your service, Tim. I also want to thank Mark Zarensky for stepping up once again into Federation leadership, as you will soon learn. Uh, Mark took the uh, mantle when, uh, when Michael stepped down from his lay leadership as treasurer and was appointed to serve out the remaining two weeks of his term. And you'll hear we will be nominating him as Michael's uh, place. Uh, Mark, I don't know if you're here, but I think you, are you here? There you are. Thank you. Uh, I think you may not have realized what you got yourself into, uh, but I am very glad that you're there all the same. And finally, to Harvey Wallace. Uh, he calls me boss, I call him chief. Harvey's singular focus on the two priorities of security for our community and developing and strengthening our partnerships with our agencies are doing more to make this community simultaneously stronger, safer, and vibrant for years to come. And I look, I look forward to working with you for, through your next and final year of uh, your chairmanship. Now, you can read all about everything else that's going on in Federation in your annual report. I just want to take this opportunity, finally, to thank some key staff people. If you look around, if you look at the report, and I hope that you'll take that home, You'll be impressed, I think, with me at the quality of our messaging, at the quality of our marketing, and our ability to deliver high-quality professional events. And I just have to thank Nancy Tully, our Senior Director of Marketing, for her leadership in this area. It's been extraordinary. And just to name her particular staff this evening, Penny Taylor, Amy Packett, Sam March, Grace Cohen, and Jason Williams, they have just been doing such a beautiful job. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing just what's next. And finally, a special note to uh, the work of our new campaign manager, Joel Frankel, this evening, whose hard and passionate work have already yielded great results, along with Lori Wishney, who keeps me on track and schedule. And if you have a regular conversation with me each year, it's because Lori reminds me to get it done. So thank you, Lori. Our community thanks you. <laughs> Finally, I want to thank the other members of my senior staff who are here tonight and complete an e exceptional team. Stephen Cohen, our Vice President of Planning and Allocations, who's working in close partnership with Michael Oberlander. Don Hannon, our Chief Financial Ad Officer wherever he is, he's back here somewhere. And finally, the person that is the key to any success we may ever have as a community, and that is my executive assistant, Clayton Merritt. Clayton, thank you for keeping me on track. 110 years ago, my grandparents were able to come to America because of the support that federated philanthropies like ours was able to provide to them and to our family. 110 years later, it's with deep feeling and meaning that I see that continuity before my eyes tonight. Not just in the legacy of our board chairs or the work that we did, as you saw in those videos, but I mean, or even in the me uh, memory of Alan and Sig, nor even in the hundreds of you that are 
here that have registered and that will join us for our campaign kickoff in just a moment. I see the continuity very personally in the eyes of Morris uh, and France's daughter, my mother Beverly, who sits here, and I'm so honored and full of emotion that she is able to join me in such uh, events, who raised me to love our tradition, our learning, and our people as a catalyst to do great things in the world. It's with a profound sense of tradition that I see this evening through the eyes of my wife, Miggy, my son, Hoban, who, along with Beverly, are all here tonight, and Emma, my daughter, who's with us in spirit at college in New York. It's this family, close and extended, all of whom have so beautifully enhanced my life, all of you who have worked so hard for our community and demonstrate day in and day out the power of our people, the strength of our tradition, and the value of making Jewish community part of a life well lived. Thank you so much for everything you do.